Welcome to the Industry Experts Panel at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com. My name is Michelle Holliday. We have had an incredible month so far in August, both on our channel and, of course, across the globe. This month, we have featured Mr. Robert David Steele, Gregory Manorino, NSA whistleblower Bill Binney, sought after economic analyst and investor Andrew Zatlin, and best selling author and self made multimillionaire Daniel Amaduri of FutureMoneyTrends.com. We are rounding out August on the topic of gold. Joining us today is Mr. Bill Murphy, the chairman and director of GATA.org, the Gold Antitrust Action Committee. Bill, welcome to the show. How are you today? Good. Thanks for having me, Michelle. Good to be here. Oh, we are very happy that you're here right now. And you must be very happy with $1,500 USD per ounce gold right now. Yeah, well, it's about time. Gold has already made a little while ago all-time highs in 73 countries. So we're on our way to making all-time highs in the U.S. And it's good to see, of course. Fantastic news across, really, the world. Now, Bill, this is also a very strong dollar even stronger as a gold rally, but both are beating other currencies. Gold is really reacting well here. Talk to us about what you're watching happen from your vantage point and why. Well, it's interesting you brought that up, Michelle, because many people think gold reacts to the dollar, but the dollar hasn't done a thing in the last three months and gold has gone bonkers. So that's not the case at all. In my opinion, the real reason, which is what we noticed a few months ago, Gold is making its move right now in the United States because the gold cartel, the banks, the Federal Reserve, the Treasury, U.S. government, uh, uh, the BIS, are running out of available physical gold to keep the price down like they did for six years. Uh, a while ago, uh, gold broke out of a massive six-year base, and it's beginning to explode. And this is just the very beginning of what's coming because the bad guys, as I call them, don't have the ability to do what they've done all these years and put everybody to sleep. Now, when you say put everybody to sleep, specifically, what are you speaking of? Well, gold did nothing for years while other assets soared. And you saw what Bitcoin did and, uh, and, and the stock market keeps going up and real estate and art. And gold just sat there like Dickie the Dunce. And of course, silver is much worse. And we can maybe get into it's finally catching up. But they're losing control of what they're able to do. And most people don't understand what these people have done to keep gold and silver at artificially low prices. And that's all beginning to unwind. And there's no telling what, what they can do on the upside far faster than most people think. Now, Bill, you are the founder of the Gold Antitrust Action Committee, which is commonly known as GATA. In order to give everybody some context of what you are speaking of, please talk to us about your own background and please also share what happened that led you to create GATA, including the specifics such as when GATA was actually created and the timeline of your experience, because this is a fascinating story. Well, I have a commodities background at one point, was a pretty big futures trader back in the day and uh, things changed and I, I noticed the internet was really getting going in 1998 and I decided to write about the gold market and silver market because I have such a, a good deal of experience with it. So I began the Metropole Cafe. It's a website that uh, I've been working on, working for and with for myself for all these years. And I noticed right after starting that the gold price was acting funny at $300 an ounce. And I checked around with all my contacts and this and that, and long-term capital management had just blown up. And basically, whether it was for the Bank of Italy themselves, they had, they had to get out of all their positions because of the bankruptcy, and they were short 400 tons of gold. And it, it was clear to me that the bullion banks, who I heard were selling, were making sure collectively that the price wouldn't go up. And the, it turns out later the Fed arrangement, so on. So I was just complaining about this rigged market and Chris Powell, who was editor of a daily newspaper in Connecticut, was sick of me complaining about it. So he said, let's do something about it. So at the beginning of 1999, we formed GATA to expose the manipulation of the gold price. And uh, initially, we thought it was just bullion banks. But then we realized uh, it involved central banks. And then we, it was involved in the silver market. And it's just taken off uh, ever since then. And, of course, they keep trying to do what they, they, they do to suppress the price and do different things at different times. But their latest scheme 
uh, is blowing up and it's about time and there's a lot to be hopeful for uh, when it comes to gold and silver in the months ahead. Now, when you speak of the latest scheme, expound on that for us. Well, in 2011, uh, you know, gold and, when I made high, highs in dollars above uh, $1,900 an ounce, silver went up to $50 and then they attacked it. Well, in my opinion, JP Morgan loaded up on the silver market. We're getting ready to take it back into the dumpster as they've done for these past eight and a half years. Uh, and then in September of uh, 2011, gold made a high and they began attacking it and attacking, attacking it. And they with coordinated efforts and then they brought it down to its lows which we've had over the past many years, and they just kept it there by supplying physical gold and silver to the market along with their big paper selling on the, com on the commodity exchange, which is and they, right now the open interest in both gold and silver, which is the number of longs and shorts, is right near all-time high. So they're still doing what they can, but they're getting beat by these sophisticated buyers who know what's coming and are buying up the physical market also. So they're backpedaling. I mean, and today as we speak, uh, gold is 1540. Silver's ex broke through a key a level yesterday at 1750. Now it's taken out 18. And the surprise is going to be what silver is going to do because the gold silver ratio, which went above 90, is now 85 or 86. The more norm is, I don't know, 30, 40, or 50. That's how cheap silver is compared to gold. So they're, they're in a process of losing control, and that's the way it's trading. And it's a very exciting time because. Nobody's used to it. Uh, the bad guys are still mega short, but they've got a problem and they've, they've got to figure out what they're going to do. So, so really what's happened is not that they've changed their mind, but that people are starting to wake up, notice what they're doing and realize that it can't go on forever and starting to stock up on metals right now. Absolutely. And of course, one of the factors is Look, look at what interest rates have done around the world. And of course, the big complaint about gold and silver, it doesn't pay any interest. Well, it's better than s some people investing in German bonds when you got to pay them. So all of a sudden, at the, at the exact right time, the interest in gold and silver has picked up as this gold cartel and the JP Morgan forces are losing control because they don't have the physical supply to do what they have done. And so you're right. They have no intention uh, of wanting to give up, but they're being forced to figure out what to do. And it's great to see after eight years of uh, watching gold and silver getting kicked in the butt to have these bad guys get kicked in the butt. That's so interesting because it's, it's like it's uh, boomeranging basically against them because they've kept it so low that now everybody can start buying now that they're waking up. Exactly. What they've made is gold and silver like coiled springs. And the spring broke first in gold. And now people are realizing silver is so cheap, they're going after silver. And they're in trouble. Wow. Now, staying with the price of gold for just a moment, as opposed to national securities, which must be capped in value. Otherwise, exports and imports could become tricky. The price of gold does not answer to anyone. It's predicted that once the dollar tops off, gold will rise an additional 25% and go beyond the $2,000 mark throughout the world. Is the USD shortage in the world the last hurdle for $2,000 gold? Pretty much. And I'm, I'm a $3,000 gold guy and a $100 silver guy. So I'm obviously very bullish. And uh, again, it's because of their, their lack of control. And people want to own gold be because it gives them protection. And, and if you look at what's going on now in the United States and in other parts of the world, quantitative easing is going to go more berserk, deficit spending, it's totally out of control. You've got zero to negative interest rates. What are they going to do from here? And it's just getting more focus on the precious metals. And uh, what we're seeing recently is just the very beginning. Now, Bill, shifting gears just a little bit, on a scale of 1 to 10, how likely do you perceive it to be that the Federal Reserve will go back to zero interest rates? Well, it's a very good question. I mean, there's a lot of congestion about it. And who am I to say that? I guess it will depend on, on how bad things get in the United States and around the world. Uh, it's an interesting time because you've got President Trump saying how great everything is, the economy's booming, and there's certain statistics that say that. And other people say things are falling apart behind the scenes. And uh, 
the, the interest rate picture in the United States is fascinating because is, is it going down because things are really worse than expected? Or that it's going down because everybody wants to get involved with their interest rates here because they're higher than elsewhere. And it's a talk that goes on and on in the financial community. What are your thoughts about President Trump's performance and what do you foresee in the 2020 elections? <laughs> He's a character. We used to go to the same church in New York, Marble Collegiate Church, that Dr. Norman Vincent Peale wrote The Power, Power of Positive Thinking. Uh, was the pastor when I first got there, and that's where he met Marla Maples, his second wife. And I used to live in New York City. I'm in Dallas now. And so I've been around him and a lot of his antics for years. And no matter what you think of him, you got to respect him. He became president of the United States. And uh, he, he knew how to do it and, and got the job done. So, you know, he's got to be given a chance to, to do what he is, to, to, to do what he, he set out to do. And his style is totally different, obviously, than anyone else's. But uh, – uh, got to respect uh, how he got there and, and what he's been able to do so far. Now, do you personally know him or did you just go to the same church? Did you have not? Not really. I mean, I, my sister played uh, softball with Marla Maples. And so I've met her a couple of times and a bunch of other people that went there were, were quite something. It was a great experience. So the same circles. What do you make of the fact that before the elections, um, then when they thought, that Hillary Clinton was going to win. They made a big deal about it's the American way that whoever wins the presidency is to be respected by the entire country because that's what we do once the election takes place. We all come together. And then they didn't. They completely reneged in this situation. What do you make of that scenario? Well, that's, I guess, typical politics in the United States. Uh, so are losers. No, not too many people thought Hillary Clinton would lose. And in my opinion, it was the worst candidate in the history of the United States and set it up for Donald Trump. But again, he did it. And, and uh, you know, shame on them for not getting behind what the president is trying to do because it's for the good of the country. And he's got a different style and uh, it annoys a lot of people. But he's the man. And uh, uh, until someone else takes his place, you know, we should be behind him. Do you think that the China trade deal will come together? And what kind of impact do you think it will have? Well, who am I to say? But is there anything more annoying that's been going on all year than this China-U.S. trade talk? It's on again. It's off again. It's on again. It's off again. It's endless. And I know it's a difficult thing that has to be done. But, uh, um, you know, if, if, if it gets out of hand, it could create real problems in the economy. I know when it comes to gold right now, I call it the fear trade. When the stock market gets hit or go, go down, goes down hard, the bids show up like crazy in the gold market. And it's a new factor, which, again, I call the fear trade. And if that gets out of control on the downside, uh, all heck could break loose. When you say all heck could break loose, what do you mean? Well, I mean, in terms of the financial markets, the stock market, you know, uh, getting hit hard, the economy taking extra blows that they can't fix it. Sometimes they'll go beyond a tipping point that it's too late. And, and, and it caused a, you know, a, a financial market tobacco or economic tobacco and a recession and so on. So it's, it's a real, you know, sensitive point right now. You know, you know, people are saying the Fed should reduce a lot more. Other Fed people saying, no, they shouldn't reduce the rates at all. So it's a big controversy and uh, we'll have to see how it plays out. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of what we're hearing right now, it's very interesting. We hear a lot of the media and um, people in somewhat prominent positions, actually wanting a recession just to make the president look bad. It seems like they really don't care about the impact on the country because once the recession starts that they want, that they're sort of tooting, um, it could be very dangerous for the rest of the country. It's, these are people that really wouldn't be impacted by a recession because they're fortunate to sit in financially uh, very secure positions, but most of the country is not. Now be careful what, they, what you wish for, what they wish for, because uh, you know, of course the ultra rich, nothing's gonna affect them really, but, but from the political standpoint, you get a very bad, very bad recession, the politicians in power could have a big, tr big problem. When you say that, what do you mean? Well, I mean, they get voted out of office. In other words, they'll, they'll get, they can get blamed for it, too, as well as uh, the, the president and so on. So they got to be careful about that. And uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. You're correct. 
And of course, they want it to go south now because they want their candidates to defeat the Republicans and so on, no matter what political party you are. That's what they're, in a way, they're wishing for. They'd love to see the stock market go down, but not go down too much. <laughs> Right. And it's an interesting point. And to your point, you know, they think it's going to be blamed entirely on the president. It's not. The rest of the country are going to be looking at these people and saying, what did you do to us? That's right. And it's something that they ought to keep in mind. Now, Bill, let's go back to your expertise with precious metals. How do you feel about silver right now? And do you have any price projection for silver based on technical analysis or anything else? Yeah, well, I followed very closely, and and uh, uh, and for me, you know, we, obviously silver has been a a dog for so long, and kept down to an undervalued situation by J.P. Morgan, and it's just this past week or two starting to break out. And from a, a technical standpoint, seventeen fifty was really critical, and it blew through it uh, yesterday and today. Now it's, it was above eighteen when I checked in last, and twenty one twenty one. Uh, is the next key level. It gets above that, there's no telling what it can do on the upside. It's so cheap. Again, it's 85, 86 to one, the gold silver ratio. Right now to be equal to gold, I don't know, it should be $26, let's say. 26, it's 18. So that's how cheap it is. And the big players and big money in the world understand that. And it's interesting because, well, copper is really suffering and making low silver is taking off because of its financial market component, which is why J.P. Morgan has suppressed the price all this time. And I just think they're finally in trouble. You don't, you don't see silver action like this. If we haven't seen it in a, such a long time. It's hard to remember. And now it's, it's just acting fantastic. And it suggests that J.P. Morgan has a big problem. I can't stress that enough. Wow, this is such an interesting perspective because we really thought there was something behind the scenes that the power players were doing because they've always manipulated things, but you're saying it has nothing to do with them. It, they've lost control. That has to do with control and other big league players are taking them on. And, uh, you know, as I said earlier, I'm a $100 silver guy and I think that's where it's going. If you look at it, I mean, silver managed, no matter how it, you, you would think about it, get to uh, $50 uh, 40 years ago. <laughs> I mean, cheapers. And then it was there, you know, eight and a half years ago. So we're at 18. I mean, it's, it's just, it's ludicrous. And a lot of smart people with big money understand that and then decided to make their move. Gold went first and now silver's following. What's your timeline on $100 silver? Well, nobody knows for sure, and at least of all me, but I think it's going to happen much faster than people think once 21 is taken out and it makes its move. And I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know, I'm just guessing, but, you know, in the next year, year and a half, I mean, much faster than people think. So interesting. And what about $3,000 gold? And do you think that's going to be some sort of limit? Or do you, what's your timeline there? Oh, my good friend John Emery is well known in the gold silver world. You know, he's, he's talking $5,000 gold. And a lot of people just put numbers out there and they could be dead right. I don't know. You have other people at like Jim Rickards who talks about $10,000 gold. All I know is it's, 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 it's probably it's going to go bonkers. And what the limit is, it's hard to say. It depends upon what happens. But once we get to the all-time highs in the U.S. above 1900, uh, watch out. Now, Bill, I want to ask you something. We've had a couple people come on with perspectives that if gold goes too high, it's going to interfere with the possibility of having currencies that are gold-backed come back into play. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, and that's a difficult question, probably out of my league, but a lot of people are saying, you know, uh, the reason that it's going to be gold back is because the price is going to go that high. So you've got some people thinking just the opposite. It's very hard to say. And when it comes to gold in the U.S., we don't even know if the United States has any gold left. There hasn't been an audit since, uh, independent audit since 1955. How do we know? We could have leased it out, swapped it all. We may not have any. So what is the United States going to do? I don't know, but it's, it's a fascinating story. And someday I hope we get the answers. 
It is a fascinating story. Now, there's something else that's happening behind the scenes, Bill. Our company at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com and our free newsletter has covered several specific gold stocks this year, such as First Majestic Silver, and they're up by 78%. Franco Nevada is up over 23%. Royal Gold up 40%, and a couple of others, respectively, up 63% and, again, 32%. So, it's done incredibly well. And for everybody, all of our subscribers that are incredibly happy. Now, when you go on the other side of things, the retail interest in physical metals and the mining stocks is remaining very subdued. Are you experiencing that same sort of indifference? And what are your thoughts on that? What's your take? It's a great point. First of all, Keith Newmeyer, who heads up First Majestic, is one of the great guys in the industry, a class act, Wonderful guy. Uh, I've gotten to know him over the years and one of the very few people who will stick up for what God has to say and love the guy. When it comes to what you're saying about the retail, it's amazing. They're more, the little person or this average guy or like me or whatever is selling gold and silver here, not buying. It's the big people, the big money that's buying. The, the premiums until recently in, in gold and silver were non-existent. It's almost unheard of. So, because gold and silver were dead for so long, they, they can't wait to get out and uh, get their money back. And so that whole market still has to hit the gold and silver arena. And when that does, oh my gosh, these silver stocks are, and gold stocks are going to go nuts, especially some of the juniors that haven't reacted yet. That's such an interesting point. I mean, when we are looking at this, the gold stocks and the major players are just jumping in like crazy. but Everyone that's holding silver and gold now, they're like, oh, it's back up again. Let's sell. They're selling at the exact wrong moment in time. Well, that's the, the nature of the average investor in the United States. That's what they tend to do, and especially in gold and silver. And quite honestly, that's what makes the gold and silver situation that much more bullish. There's no frenzy out there at all. I know exuberance people say people get too excited, too exuberant, you want to sell because it's getting too frothy. It's just the reverse. There's no interest. No, no, none. But I mean, it's not, it's not very much. It's small. It's Mickey Mouse. Right. Now, before we go, you are an incredible expert on gold and you've been within this industry for many, many years. What would you tell our audience? What's your advice? What do you foresee and what's your prediction? Well, we've covered some of it, and of course, I'm prejudiced, but, you know, gold and silver are just beginning to get going, and the shares are going to go nuts. It's an investment opportunity of a lifetime, in my opinion, and uh, uh, there's very little understanding of what this gold cartel has done to create what is coming. Eventually, that will be known, like all the other scandals and frauds, that when, when, you know, when, when things blow up, people are going to want answers. It happened in Madoff and Enron. It's going to happen in the gold and silver market someday. Really? So, yes, yeah, so that's, my, that's my thinking. It has been for a long time. So it's good to see gold and silver on the move, but this is just the very beginning. Now, when that does happen, these cartels that you're speaking of, for people that aren't familiar with what you're speaking of, name who's part of the cartels. Well, it's, kind of, it's, the, it's, the, it's the bullion banks like J.P. Morgan, and uh, uh, you've got the Fed, the Treasury, uh, You've got the Bank for International Settlements, other central banks that have been doing this for years and years and years. And uh, it's going to be quite the comeuppance down the road because nobody wants to talk about it because these people represent the people behind them, the richest and most powerful people in the world, and nobody wants to take them on. We know the financial media we can't get anywhere with when we send them information about what's going on in the gold market. They don't want to hear about it. They won't even mention our name. So... That's all to come. That's how big a scandal is. My colleague, Chris Powell, who's secretary chairman of God, has said the United States would rather release its nuclear secrets than what it's doing in the gold market. Isn't that incredible? You would think this would be a major story. You would think somebody somewhere, an investigative journalist, would get a hold of the fact that the gold manipulation has been taking place for so long, and now people are waking up against the wishes of the big banks. Well, that's right. And some people say, well, look at gold and silver going up. How could it be manipulated? Well, they, just, they don't understand anything. As I mentioned earlier, the key is the bad guys are losing control. 
if they would just ex ex explore that, they would have a great story. Absolutely, Bill. This has been an amazing interview. Please tell everyone where you're publishing your work and how they can follow you. Well, they can sign up at lametropolcafe.com for a two-week free trial, see if it's a value. And my colleague, Chris Powell, does a great job at GATA. They can go to www.gata.org and get on his free list and see what GATA has to say. Absolutely. Always great to have you on this show. Looking forward to having you back. Thanks for having me, Michelle. Really enjoyed it. Absolutely. We're going to watch these precious metals rise. Mr. Bill Murphy, Chairman and Director of GATA.org, the Gold Antitrust Action Committee. For the Industry Experts Panel, I'm Michelle Holliday at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com.